Understanding how and why we behave the way we do in all of our relationships is going to impact our satisfaction and happiness with our relationships and of course the success of the relationships themselves. Learning about this was one of the first things that really kicked off my personal development journey. Hello, welcome, welcome. In this video, we're gonna talk about something called attachment styles. First of all, to call out the elephant in the room, if you're wondering what's wrong with this girl's face, her eyes look a little red, her neck looks a little red, I am going through something called topical steroid withdrawal, doing everything I can to mitigate and heal from it. If that's something you're interested, there's a couple videos here that you can open in a new tab and watch later. One is about a parasite detox that I did, and another one just summarizes topical steroid withdrawal. Moving into the good stuff. So one of the first things I learned about the relational side of personal development was attachment styles. And it completely blew my mind. It clicked so many things into place for how I behave, why I behave this way, why I attract the type of partners that I do. And this theory and this science applies to everyone. So everyone is going to fit into one of these categories. Attachment theory originated in the 1940s, 1950s. There are a couple well-known people that studied it, including John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth. And what they were doing was actually observing children and what their reaction was when their parent left the room. So the child was left with other children or with toys to play with, and the researchers, researchers were monitoring the child's reaction upon the parent leaving. So some of the kids would kind of notice, maybe get a bit uncomfortable, but go ahead and keep playing. And then when their parent came back, they would go give their parent a hug and they'd be happy about it. Some kids would totally lose it, they would cry, they would feel really upset, maybe they'd be able to calm down, play, and then be really excited when the parent came back. Other kids would seem to be completely not affected, continue to play, and also completely not affected when the parent came back. Something that was interesting about some of those children who seemed cool, calm, and collected is they were actually still having a physiological response similar to the kids who felt super upset, like an increased heart rate, for example. So attachment theory describes our attachment styles and our attachment styles are formed during childhood. Most people who study this break it into four main categories. So I'm gonna explain what those are, keeping in mind that there is a spectrum. So you might not be all of the things on this end or all of the things on this end. You might come somewhere in the middle and the middle is where we want to be. So there is an anxious attachment style, an avoidant attachment style, disorganized attachment style, and secure. Anxious, avoidant, and disorganized are insecure attachment styles, and of course, secure is the secure attachment style, and that is the goal, that is where we wanna to work towards because that is where we are able to connect and we are able to experience intimacy and true love and just feel safe in our relationships. If we have an insecure attachment style, it means that we experience some sort of relational trauma, which can be defined as consistent disruption to our safety, consistent disruption to our feeling of acceptance, and not having our needs being met consistently. So I know sometimes we hear the word trauma and we think it needs to be one big catastrophic event, which can absolutely be the case as well. But when it comes to attachment styles, this consistent low dose, let's say, or low grade compromising of our inherent self-worth as a child and or our safety will also contribute to what our insecure attachment style becomes. So first of all, anxious attachment style. When we have an anxious attachment style, we may experience things like being constantly wor worried if our partner loves us back or if our partner feels the same way as we do. We wanna be really, really close to them. We want them to be vulnerable with us. If we have an anxious attachment style, we also tend to fantasize about what the relationship will be. We create a lot of stories of what we wanna happen and we fantasize and pedestal the person that we are in a relationship with. So right away we are putting them above us and basically putting more worth in who they are versus who we are. You can imagine why no matter how amazing this person is, that's probably an unhealthy behavior. An anxiously attached person might want to spend a lot of time with their partner, but also not voice that they wanna spend a lot of time with their partner for fear that the partner will leave them if they do express these needs. This also sometimes shows up in this mind reading expectation where we think our partner should just know what we want, but we aren't asking for it ourselves. And the reason this specifically happens with anxiously attached people is that anxiously attached people tend to be super empathetic. Empathetic basically means that we are able to tune into the needs and the emotions of the people around us really easily. And for some people, this can actually feel really overwhelming because you are trying to manage not just your emotions, but everyone else's. Someone who is anxiously attached can sometimes feel that the emotions that the other person experience, is experiencing are their responsibility. It's my responsibility to fix this or I caused this. And so we take on all this responsibility for someone else's emotions when we are anxiously attached. What's really beautiful about this is 
this is an example of being able to be connected to people because we are really able to feel them, which is really powerful and beautiful, but if our own boundaries aren't clear and strong and we are taking on way more than is our responsibility, that's when it becomes unhealthy. Anxiously attached people sometimes feel like or describe themselves as chameleons. So when you're in a situation, you're able to tell what that other person needs from you and you can become that person really easily. And sometimes this doesn't even feel hard or uncomfortable because it's so natural to you because of your childhood experience of relational trauma that you had. And again, when I say the word trauma, it doesn't necessarily mean something big and bad happened to you. It's just the relationship and the dynamics between your family unit and the survival mechanism that you created because of that. The last thing I'll say about the characteristics of the anxiously attached style is that we are often self-doubting. So we second guess our own opinions and thoughts and beliefs. And it's probably because as a child, we were told that our opinions, beliefs, and thoughts were wrong. And so we had to look outside of ourselves to get the right answer because we started to doubt whether we knew what was right and what was best for ourselves. So now as adults, we're often looking with out of ourselves to get reassurance that what we're doing is right, what we believe is right, what we're doing is okay, instead of just trusting within. So there can be a lot of self-doubt in the anxious attachment style. Next is the avoidant attachment style. So when we are avoidantly attached, we tend to put up walls. We want to create distance between us and the partner, and we can do this in a number of ways. If we are avoidantly attached, we might feel really reserved in giving up personal information early on in a relationship, showing emotion early on in a relationship. We might be a little bit hot and cold with the people that we are dating. We might feel interested in them, but still super reserved. We don't want them to get too close to us. We definitely don't want them to need or crave time and attention from us because that would be a lot to give as someone who is an avoidant person. So those things can feel really intimidating. When we have an avoidant attachment style, we usually identify with being really independent. And these walls and boundaries that we have up are important to us because what we have learned to create our avoidant attachment style is that other people aren't gonna protect us, so we need to protect ourselves. And when the belief is I need to take care of me and no one else can help me because no one really showed me they were capable or willing to help me as a child, then of course it's gonna be really hard to let someone in because if and when you do let someone in and they let you down, which is a really big fear of the avoidant person, it just reaffirms that people can't be trusted to be supportive. Sometimes when we have an avoidant attachment style, we also have an elevated self-esteem that is a little bit inaccurate to what is reality. So we believe that we are better than others and we use that as a tool to pick apart other people and decide why they shouldn't be in our lives and also come up with really creative ways to continue to push that person away. So out of these first two, anxious and avoidant, you might feel like, oh, I do a little bit of this or I don't really do all of those things and I do a little bit of this, but I don't do all those things. And like I said, it's a spectrum. So you may be way over on this side or you may be somewhere a little bit closer to the middle. And of course we can use behaviors that are both anxious and avoidant. The third insecure attachment style is called disorganized or fearful avoidant. And this person, it is unpredictable what they are going to behave like in any given moment. And unfortunately, a disorganized attachment style is formed when there was a parent in the home who created terror in the child. And I think the word terror really lands and helps to describe what that experience must have been like because the child never knew if the mom or the dad was going to be in their monster form or they were gonna be in the nice form. So the child had no consistency, no awareness, no cues that they could understand. So they become very, very disorganized in how they are able to attach and how they are able to relate. This is different from someone who may lean more towards an anxious attachment style if their partner is even more avoidant or an avoidant attachment style if their partner is even more anxious. The kicker with the anxious and avoidant attachment style is that they are very, very often attracted to each other. And I recently read an article where they described the anxious person as an octopus. You can imagine all of these different arms just wanting to grab onto whatever they can get and the avoidant person as a turtle who is slow to move forward and quick to pull back and pull into their shell. Now this dynamic can play out and does play out because basically we are a self-fulfilling prophecy for the other attachment styles fear. So the anxious person is scared and believes that they aren't worthy of a partner who's gonna stay. We believe that whatever partner we're with is probably gonna leave us at any given moment. So we become attracted to an avoidant partner who is more likely to leave us at any given moment. An avoidant person is afraid that their partner is gonna be needy and is gonna take from them. And because we create these, these beliefs within ourselves that this is what happens and this is how this goes, 
it is easy for us to manifest something that will confirm that. And the thing is, when we experienced these disruptions as children, it meant that our parents weren't able to meet our needs consistently or ever. So if a parent was caught up in their own emotional instability, if they were using drugs or alcohol, distracted in any way, or just not able to attune to their baby's needs for whatever reason, not able to understand their baby, then when you're crying because you need to be fed and your parent thinks it's because you need to sleep, all of a sudden there's this disconnect. They weren't able to tune into what you needed and your brain told you, this is unsafe. I'm feeling unsafe. I'm not getting my needs met. All I know how to do is cry. I don't even know how to talk at this point. And there becomes a little bit of disruption. So if the needs were inconsistently met, not quite most of the time, we generally lean to the anxious attachment style. And if our needs were almost never met by our parents, then we tend to lead into the avoidant attachment style. So the avoidant child has to learn how to do everything for themselves. And therefore there is not a lot of trust between them and the other. So the walls go up and the belief becomes, I need to do it on my own. No one's gonna help me and no one did help me. All of these disruptions to our safety, to our acceptance, to our self-worth belief are actually a disruption from our spiritual connection. We are wired to be connected beings, not just connected to ourselves, of course connected to ourselves, connected to each other, and also connected to everything that is on this planet and everything as a whole. And when we remember that it is connection that elevates us and connection that creates love and love that is all around us, we are able to remember that we were born completely whole. We are born completely divine. But as we grow up, we get told or reminded or showed in different ways that we are not enough just as we are. And that creates a spiritual or a connection disruption. So ultimately being motivated to work towards a secure attachment style is being motivated to be able to connect deeper to yourself, to others and the world around you. And that is strengthening our spiritual connection. Hearing all of this might make you feel a couple different type of ways. It might make you feel like, oh my God, that's me, I understand now. It might make you feel hopeless because you've been in this pattern for so long. But the good news is there are ways to heal these attachment styles and move more towards being secure. Healing anything, healing these behaviors and these patterns always starts with awareness, which is where you are right now. The next step after awareness and really seeing how these patterns are playing out in your life or have played out would be to identify what your clear triggers are. So if you know that you have the behaviors of an anxious person, the behaviors of an avoidant person, or something that feels more mixed or disorganized, you can start to notice in your relationships when that is coming up for you and what things are triggering those type of emotions, either the desire to pull back or the anxious feeling of I need more, I want more and feeling insecure that they are going to leave you or that you can't express your needs because they're not going to be met because sadly you believe that you don't deserve it. I will say too that it is not rare to have an insecure attachment style. So most people have an insecure attachment style. Most people are on the anxious or avoidant, not secure. Moving towards the secure attachment style, whether you're coming from either side of the spectrum, always comes down to self-worth and boundaries. So I'm gonna have to make another video about that if that is something you're interested in and actually what you can start doing to heal these patterns and to move towards secure attachment style. Please let me know in the comments. This is stuff that I love talking about, love teaching about, and would be happy to make that as well. All right, friend, I hope this was illuminating. I hope this was helpful. Leave a comment below if there's anything you want me to elaborate on and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.